You guys want to hear something really positive? So I don't know much about music. This is often sort of leads to me being the subject of ridicule. Uh, the most that I know about music is that it's really cool when there isn't bass for a bit, but then the bass happens. Uh, I think that's what most music is about. And I also like it when people do the thing with their voice where they do, where the, the, the voice, uh, like, you know, lots of stuff like that. I like that stuff. So anyway, I don't know who Taylor Swift is. Uh, seriously, I, I, I don't know. You could put any song of hers to me and I might say like, I know that. I wouldn't know it was hers though. You could blind test me. I don't know. You know, Taylor Swift was recently uh, at Seattle. I, I realized this when A, traffic became horrible and B, their people had like getaway car or something uh, painted on their back windshield and lipstick or something like this. I don't know if it was actually lipstick, but that was that was what it looked like. Did you shoot your shot? Yes, I hooked up with Taylor Swift. She said I was the best that she'd ever had and that she wouldn't write a song about how her relationship uh, didn't go the way she wanted, as, as seems to be a trend. Uh, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. But she's not only giving mad throat game, she's also driving voter registration. Now, this is pretty cool, okay? On Tuesday morning just last Tuesday, the singer posted a short message on Instagram encouraging her quarter billion followers followers to register to vote. Afterward, the website she directed her fans to, the nonpartisan nonprofit vote.org, recorded more than 35,000 registrations, according to the organization. 35,252 new registrations on National Voter Registration Day were the most since 2020, the organization said, in a 23% jump over last year. The number of 18-year-olds registered was more than double 2022. It's not clear exactly how, shut up, how many of the registrations were tied to Swift's Instagram. Vote.org reported a 1,226% jump in participation in the hour after the post. That's cool. I think that's pretty neat. Taylor Swift's fans are going to be disproportionately young and female, which means that probably like 95% of them would vote Democrat over Republican. Like, maybe even more than that. I genuinely can't imagine otherwise. Yeah, Taylor Swift herself is liberal, I presume. Maybe she's more progressive than I'm aware of. It doesn't really matter. There's a limit to how loud she can be in her political advocacy because she's one of the biggest stars on the planet. And for that reason, she's kind of disincentivized to being aggressively political. However, her audience is at the very least correlationally liberal, right? So her making a nonpartisan plea for people to register to vote disproportionately benefits us, right? Like young women overwhelmingly are left-leaning, hugely so. So like, that's cool. Uh, I think that this is a, another like little hopium pill that people see lying on the table and they don't take it. You don't, you're not taking your pills. You're not crushing your hopium pills up into a fine powder and then snorting them when you could be. And I don't know why you're not. See, artists overwhelmingly are left-leaning. Not all of them, but overwhelmingly. Yeah. Uh, you know, the wealthy have a tendency to be right-leaning and they fund right-leaning causes. Uh, but there's a shift in this when it comes to people who create art, usually because creating art involves, at some level, creativity, humanity, a consideration for other people's feelings, and an introspective spirit. And all of these things are anathema to a conservative mind. Conservatism is about staunch, regimented, unintrospective, unthoughtful, or thoughtless, I guess, uh, sort of authoritarianism, you know? traditionalism, do what's already been done, a lack of empathy as well. So I think that the more persistent and aggressive the right wing gets, the more we're going to see a kind of positive turn for American cultural hegemony. We are the light of the world, culturally. We shine, we're like a beacon in the night. Our music, our movies, they go everywhere, you know? Everywhere. We don't see movies from Saudi Arabia, China, Russia, at least not often, but they see ours with bad dubs. <laughs> or the, the cultured ones listen to it with English dubs, uh, with local subtitles, and sort of mock their friends who do otherwise. Whatever works for them. You know, I, I, I just, I think it's important to remember that that is like a cultural force that we hold to. 
And I just, I just think it's nice. I just think it's nice. You know, I mean, just with, with a single Instagram post, uh, 35,000 people, that's an insane number of people with an Instagram post to get signed up to vote. And I bet you like 90% of them are left leaning. Yeah, there were conservatives who were mad about them. I, I, this Sean, Sean Davis guy, I've seen him before. I forget. There's a reaction face, you know, that's cool. Yeah, I've seen some people raging out about this. It's really difficult for them to do so, though, because Taylor Swift's call to uh, register was ostensibly nonpartisan. And that's a benefit, right? Her audience is overwhelmingly left leaning on average. So she doesn't have to say anything partisan. And it makes it more difficult to attack her when she doesn't do so. I think it's, I think it's nice. I think it's uh, powerful. 35,000. 35,000. Now that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2020 election. Hold on. I always forget the exact numbers involved. It, it, it's always wild when I go back, when I remember that like Biden had like 7 million more votes than Trump here and people unironically argue that the election was stolen, like at that level, you know? Anyway, seriously, that's some more hopium for you. The fact that Joe Biden, in terms of popular vote at least, beat out Donnie by like five points. Well, uh, 3.2 plus 4, 4.5 points, uh, which is pretty great. 35,000 is a not at all insignificant number. 35,000 would have been enough to turn a number of these red states blue, huh? Yeah, yeah, they would have. You know, 35,000 people in Texas in the right places, along with some changes to the, uh, the uh, disenfranchising, Blexus. Maybe one day. What is that blue one? This one? Nebraska has a separate uh, district and elector that goes with it's. It's like the Omaha city district that goes blue and and yeah. Blexus one day, Texas officials admitted that Texas is a blue state. They had to suppress the vote hard to keep it red. Yep. No. 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 Literally, I think it's been found without the deliberate voter suppression, like taking away the voting, the 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 uh, the uh, the um, mail-in booths and stuff. Without that. Texas may, may have very well gone blue. And if Texas had gone blue, then the GOP is cooked forever. Uh, seriously, the GOP would have to win back unwinnable. Like, like Texas going blue would is, is like an unfathomably strong blow against... Anyway, yeah. So Taylor Swift made Texas blue or something. That's the, that's the lesson. What's your 2024 election hot take? Yeah, I'll tell you. All right. Uh, 50 state sweep. Oh, hold on. There we go. 50 state sweep. 51 states will have, uh, will have annexed, uh, Russia. And they will also vote for Joe Biden. Yeah, it's Tim Cool. Thank you. We'll invite Cuba. Yeah, uh, 50, yeah, no, it, it'll be DC and Puerto Rico with the, uh, statehood. 